Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today I'm here in Ontario, Canada at Winley Farms Maple Syrup, Syrup with Peter Lorman. That's we've, awesome. And we've done this for 30 years. This is very exciting because I'm going to get to see the full process of maple syrup harvest and all the work that goes into it. Yeah, and we will take you from the beginning of the sap in the sugar shack to the, to the final product. That's incredible. Thank you so much. No problem. So what would be the first step in the process? Well, like most farms, our bush is in the back. So we're all on tubes and vacuum. So it all gets to one location. And then we take this tank and we'll haul up. And then we'll pump into this tank. And we have a reverse osmosis. And when sap comes up from the bush, it's at 2%. And when we'll put it through our RO, RO or reverse osmosis, and it will take it up to 8% sugar content. And once it reaches 8% sugar content, we'll take it over to our evaporating room. That's very cool. The sap comes in in this sap. large tank. And how many gallons does this hold? This, this or tank is a 600 gallon. Wow. So we have two tanks. The tank on the left is the concentrate at 8% and it goes into our evaporator. On the other side is permeate, which is pure water, and we need to keep that to wash our RO at the end of the day. So when the concentrate goes into the back pan, the back pan is called the flue pan, and the reason it's called the flue pan, it goes up and down like this. And if you were to put this on, uh, stretch it out, this would be six feet wide. So it just increases the surface area of the boiling area. Just boiling the water off of the sap with the evaporation. Very cool. Just by density, it works its way forward into the finishing pan, or the front pans, and we draw off at seven degrees above the boiling temperature of water. And then this is the maple syrup. Yeah, it's almost ready to come off. Awesome. and we've never seen the boiling temperature of water at 212 here, so we have to calibrate this the start of every boil. Really? So we calibrate it, then we set the draw seven degrees above that. Wow, and so this is pretty much maple syrup. The only process left is the refining process. That's right. This comes off at 66%. We'll take it up to 67 on a propane stove, and then we'll filter it. Very cool. So we can go into our bottling room. So we'll bring it into this pan, which is on propane, so we can um, get the bricks right. And we use a refractor to test our bricks rather than temperature. And then it goes through our filter press and then into our bottler. That's and very cool. The bottler keeps this syrup at 185 degrees, and that's what we need to bottle at. So and we'll to seal, seal the bottles. Yes. Show you what the filter press does. These are both same day, same batch. If you look at that, you can see the settlement on the bottom. Yes, quite a bit. And this is after the filter press. Perfectly clear. Yeah, and it's a little lighter. Yes, so this is you tapping the tree. Yeah, and we usually ha only put one tap in per tree because you have to be over about two and a half inches and about four inches up from the last year's tap. And you don't want, so you don't want a tap in last year's tap, and you gotta make sure it's clean wood. So we, we keep going around the tree. That's really interesting. And how long would one tree last you? A friend of mine has a tree that's over 150 years old. So they can produce a very long time. Yeah, yeah. I like the younger trees, like that tree is probably 80 to 100 years old, and it's a fast growing tree, so it will protect it or it'll grow and cover up the tap hole. Like yes. some years you can't find it. After a couple of years, you won't be able to find the tap hole. Oh, really? Because the tree is growing so much. Bigger trees don't grow that much anymore. And how much production would you expect out of each tree? We try for at least two liters per tap. And that's two syrup. liters of, of finished maple syrup, not yeah. sap. Yeah, so you'd, you'd be getting probably 80 liters of sap out, oh, of wow. a, out of a tree if it's 40 to one. This tree is about 80 years old, and you can see the different tap marks. Very interesting. And then these are the different taps? Yeah, I got some more to add to this, but you know, these are from the probably the 
1800s. And these are the ones that we use now. And this would be what your line looks like? Yeah. Like the line would go on to this part here. And then how far does the line go? Well, we've probably got over five miles of line in our bush. Really? Yeah. From 5 sixteenths, which is this, and then it goes into three quarters, and we have some lines that are an inch in diameter. And then where do all the lines feed into? Into a big tank at the bottom. Okay. And that's where we go and pick up the sap. Every. Kind of like that tank? Yeah, but just a lot bigger. Like these tanks here are uh, 250. The one down the bush is 900 gallons. Oh, okay. Yeah. So much bigger. Yeah, I've seen ones that are a couple thousand gallons. They're like small swimming pools. Yes. And how many trees do you have in production? We do about 600 taps. So we're not, we're not a huge producer. We're a nice craft size. And you also won a really incredible award recently. Could you tell me a little bit more about yeah, that? Yeah, in 2019, we won at the Royal Winter Fair, which is a fair in Toronto every fall. And we won first prize for amber maple syrup. Congratulations. And oh, thank you. And could you talk a little bit more about the different types grades? of maple syrup? Because I had no idea. If you look here, there's or four grades now. This is golden amber, dark, and very dark. We produce more amber. Last foil that we took was golden. Okay. And we'll get probably about three or four runs of golden, and then it will turn into amber. And last year was the first time we produced dark, probably in about 10 years. Wow. So people say, what causes that? Well, it's usually at the first of the season, the tree's just waking up, and the metabolism of the tree hasn't woken up. And as it, the season gets older and the trees woken up and the metabolism and the bacteria, that's when you get the darker syrup. And does it also have variables to do with the type of soil you have in trees? Yes, it's very much like that. It's like the wine industry. Every vineyard's a different wine. Every maple syrup producer has a, probably a bit different taste of the syrup. Because if somebody's, like we have a friend over in Collingwood that's on top of the escarpment, they produce dark and a very different taste than what we produce. We're in a sandy loam here. Okay. Fascinating how many variables there are when you're farming. Yeah. Oh, you, you probably know that with grain, right? Yes, I do. Yes. So. so very different things we're producing, but we find similarities in the agriculture industry. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's things that we have learned from other industries for the maple syrup. We're always looking at other industries to see how they do things, you know, in marketing and in production. Like, for sure. Like our reverse osmosis machine was originally um, created for kidney dialysis. Oh, really? Yeah, to purify blood. And now you're using it for maple syrup. Yeah. And it's incredible the advancements in technology that you're implementing here to become more efficient in your operation. Yeah, you have to become more efficient. Like our automatic draw off, we don't have to watch a thermometer anymore. It will do it automatically. That's great. So, you know, everybody's got to become more efficient. Doesn't mean that your product changes, but you just become more efficient. The technology can help create a more consistent product. Right. The other thing is a lot of big producers are using is monitoring systems in their bush. So they can, like, I have a friend up in Sunridge that has 19,000 taps. He can't walk his lines, so he's got monitors all through his bush that will indicate leaks. So he'll just look up on his tablet and say, oh, there's a leak in this. Oh, wow. And how do you look for leaks? We look for leaks. We've got a little thing we call the whisper, and we just walk around, and it will pick up the sound. You can't do it on a windy day. You have to do it on a nice calm day, and it will pick up. But we've also set up a lot of valves so we can close off certain systems in our bush. And if we see the vacuum go up and then we open it up and the vacuum goes down, we, we know it's in that part of the bush. And do you leave the lines up all year or do you t put them up each year? No, we leave them up all year. Now, after about three years, we start replacing some just to keep them updated and keep them clean. And they start getting brittle because of the sun. Yes. The UVs. The other thing that my friend does is he has five pumping stations in his bush. It used to take him about two hours to get them all open to start. He's got them all automatic now, but he can start them from the sugar shack. That's very nice then. Yeah. 
it saves him about two or three hours a day. And what is your favorite part of being a maple syrup producer? We just enjoy it and we enjoy meeting the customers. In the last two years, we haven't been able to talk to our customers and that's the part I miss. Why do you think Canada is known for its maple syrup? Because we're a sweet nation. Oh, that's fantastic. So a lot of people don't understand when we say 40 to one. So I made this display. So you need 40 buckets of sap to make one bucket of syrup. I had no concept of that until I saw this amazing visual. Yeah, it's it's gives somebody something to look at. So it's not as as easy as you think it would be. No. And like the last two years, people have done backyard maple syrup. And I think that's probably helped us because people realize how much work there is in it. And people have said they've burnt like four propane tanks to produce one bottle of syrup. So they said it's cheaper to come down and <laughs> buy it from us. Yes, and support your favorite maple syrup farmers. Right. That's incredible. And where would you say most of your product goes to? Well, it goes to, it's mostly farm gate. We do have a few retailers. Okay. Do you often sell to restaurants? We have a few restaurants and we have a, just mostly retailers, but a few bakers use our syrup in, in their products. And you can also order online and then do you have a farm store? Yeah, we have a farm store up at the corner there. Oh, very cool. So Maybe we have it. visitors in the summertime from all over the world and we, they buy it and they'll take it back home with them. Like the last, somebody came, I think two weeks ago and picked up some syrup and they're taking it to Kenya. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yeah. It's just that incredible. Yeah, and people in Kenya have never tasted it before. Yes, and maple syrup is so, I mean, it's what Canada is really known for. Right. And people even come just from Toronto to come and buy your maple syrup. Yeah, people have driven up from Mississauga, especially if they want a nice drive on a sunny day, they'll come up to buy some maple syrup from us. That's really cool. We have two events. The next, uh, April 2nd and 3rd, we have an open house here where we'll take people down to the bush and we'll have maple syrup on the snow and we'll have different events here. I've had maple syrup taffy on the snow. That is delicious. It's also a great way to pull teeth out too. <laughs> yeah, very true. But then also we have an event in the fall, which is the last weekend of September and the first weekend of October, where people can come and walk our bush and see the colors of the maple leaves. And uh, just to show people that maple syrup is not just a six week window. We have to work all year round because we got to maintain our bush. We got to take out trees and the bush is the most important part. If you don't have a good bush, it doesn't matter how good your equipment up is up in the sugar shack. You gotta have a healthy bush. Definitely, and that's so important for people to know about agriculture and what's similar along all the different sectors is you spend all year preparing your equipment, your soil, your whatever kind of crops or trees you have just for this one month harvest period. Yeah to make sure everything runs smoothly and you have a crop to then pay all your bills. Yeah, as somebody said, maple syrup uh, producers plan for 11 months just to work one month. Yes, and, and that's think, very true. I think all farmers do that. Yes. Except for dairy farmers, maybe they gotta work all the time. <laughs> oh yes, good point. We just maintain the bush by taking out dead branches and trees that aren't healthy, so good trees can grow. And is Ontario one of the biggest maple syrup producing provinces in Canada? No, Quebec is. Quebec? Okay. Quebec is, I think it's about 85% oh, wow. of the world's production with Ontario's like three or four percent. And would Canada export most of their maple syrup or keep it here? Um, Quebec the would export most of it. Ontario doesn't export very much. Mostly local. Yeah. That's amazing. This has been awesome to learn about the whole process. It's fascinating and I had no idea about how labor intensive maple syrup is because I just love it. <laughs> I like it too, but after maple syrup season, it takes me about three or four months before I'll eat it again. because <laughs> I have to taste every batch we make just to make sure that it's good. Well, I think that sounds like a dream job. <laughs> well, you can have my job. <laughs> well, I might just take you up on that. No problem, because that's our bush in the back. We've set up for our maple weekend so people can practice tapping. Oh, really? Yeah. That is very cool. And how do you tap? Just with, we'll have a drill and then they'll have a 
we'll just use an old metal tap that they can tap in and hang a bucket. That is awesome. You won't get any sap out of those trees, but... Well, yes. But it gets, gives them something to do. A good experience, and I love that you're doing that because it helps connect the f consumer with the maple syrup and kind of where it all comes from. Yeah. To really show people it all starts on a farm and, and all the people involved in that process. Right. So, and people enjoy doing it. Yes. Very fun experience. We tapped this year on in the middle of February and hopefully we'll make it to the middle of April. But when I first started this back 30 years ago, we used to tap on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, okay. So maybe this is a regular season this year, but who knows? Interesting. What is very exciting is I am going to be taking some of your spectacular maple syrup back to Montana with me. So I get to put the first pin for Montana in the map, which is an honor, so thank you. Ooh, very exciting. Okay. Right, you gotta find Montana. Yes. Right about here. North Central Montana. The first pin in the map. All right. Well, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And this is your beautiful packaging. So we have two liters that will, I'll, I will be taking one back to Montana. So that's why I got to put the pin in the map. And you have your 30 year sticker, but what would this be called? This is a spile or a spigot. And this is what used, they used to use and hang buckets from. That is amazing. And you have an incredible logo. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I hope you learned a little bit more about how your maple syrup gets to your table. And thank you for the incredible tour of your awesome operation. No problem. And if people would like to find a little bit more about your maple syrup, where can they go? Our website is www.winleyfarms.ca. That's awesome. Well, I'll definitely be checking it out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.